If kids were educated in four doctors and they realized how important happy making is and how important movement is and how important diet is, which goes right back to the health of the planet and how important rest and time to be in themselves is, then we would not have this situation in the world. And the problem is the medical system would have gone broke a long time ago. We'd be hard to control because we would be too in touch with our authentic truth, which would be in harmony with the reality of nature. From the Weston A. Price Foundation, welcome to the Wise Traditions Podcast for wise traditions in food, farming, and the healing arts. We are your source for scientific knowledge and traditional wisdom to help you achieve optimal health. Hey, Hilda here. Nothing like a global, quote, pandemic, unquote, to get our collective attention, to take our health into our own hands. This is episode 377, and our guest today is Paul Check. Paul is the author of numerous books, videos, and professional development courses. And he is the founder of the Czech Institute. He is also the host of the Living 4D with Paul Czech podcast. Today, Paul explains why good health is more important than ever. And he goes over his approach to living a healthy, fulfilled life. At age 60, he knows what he's talking about. He emphasizes the four doctors or teachers, happiness, movement, diet, and quiet. And he explains each in detail. Turning to these doctors helps us fulfill our dreams nourish our bodies, strengthen our spirit, and identify our purpose. They address our growth and health on all the levels, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. Before we dive into the conversation, I want you to join me at the Wise Traditions Conference this October the 21st to the 23rd in Knoxville, Tennessee. It truly is the conference that nourishes in every way. We offer nutrient-dense food, positive connections with friends new and old, and stellar, thought-provoking speakers. This year, the speakers include Kelly Brogan, Dr. Andy Kaufman, Tommy John, and Dr. Bill Schindler. I personally can't wait. So go to wisetraditions.org to register while the early bird pricing is still in effect. That's wisetraditions.org. And I can't wait to see you there. And Bubble and Bee. Bubble and Bee has more than 150 different products to choose from, many of which are USDA certified organic. They offer everything from organic insect repellent, which who doesn't need that these days, to organic body butters and palm-free soaps with really simple ingredients and compostable packaging. They've got facial cleansers, shower gels, lip balms, and the works. And Bubble and Bee also offers the world's largest line of USDA certified organic deodorants for all skin types, including Pit Putty and Pit Perfect. I think those names are so cute, and I'm so thankful for deodorants that really work. So thank you, Bubble and Bee, for all the good stuff you put in your products, the natural salt scrubs and shampoos that you offer with none of the bad stuff. And if you have a question on any of their products, you can email the owner of the company directly. It's customer service that can't be beat. So go to Bubble and Bee now at bubbleandbee.com and use the code word WISE for 15% off at checkout. Again, that's bubbleandbee.com and the code word WISE. This is Holistic Hilda, and you're listening to Wise Traditions. Welcome to Wise Traditions, Paul. Thank you. It's a pleasure. It has been years since we've seen you. Years ago, you spoke at our conference, and even then, you were healthy, dynamic, strong, and flexible, and you still are all of those things. (laughs) How is this so? Well, I practice what I teach. That's the simple answer. You know, I'm 60 years old and I can still outlift and outrun all sorts of professional athletes and it definitely surprises them. (laughs) Oh my gosh. But you started at a young age, right? To really care about your health? Well, I was raised by a mother that's a yogi. My parents were farmers. We had a 142 acre farm on Vancouver Island. We raised all sorts of stuff, sheep. We had a woolen factory. We had a horses, cows, chickens, pigs. We sold produce. We sold firewood. So it was a full, big working farm. And my mother's very holistic. And so we were, you know, always buying from organic co-ops, but we pretty much lived off the farm. We didn't have to get much from the store. So we immigrated from the United States to Vancouver Island when I was 12. So from the time I was 12, 
And we had a pig farm in Idaho, and we also had a sheep farm in Cottage Grove, Oregon, prior to getting to Idaho. So from the time I was about seven, six or seven, I think, we've always been farming. So I really grew up sort of, my mother became a member of the Self-Realization Fellowship with Paramahansa Yogananda's teachings when I was 12. And that's kind of been the whole backdrop of my whole childhood was farming and self-realization fellowship. So I was learning meditation and all sorts of training. I spent summer camp with the monks when I was 15 in the Lake Shrine in LA. And then, so really just sort of as a quick encapsulation, my whole living philosophy really is based in the principles of what Yogananda taught which is all the different styles of yoga combined together with farming. And my father was the president of the farming association in our area for many years. So that's, I'm kind of a down in the dirt dude, you know? <laughs> well, and what you're painting, that picture you're painting is so beautiful and nearly idyllic. And yet I also know that your father passed away when you were eight. So there were some things you had to work through, certainly, emotionally, right? Yeah. And so my stepfather is who I'm referring to when I say my father. You know, yes, my father drowned when I was eight. And wow, how do you put that one into context? The first thing that I will share in that regard is, one, it was just earth shattering. My parents hadn't been together since my real father and my mother since I was about three. So I only got to see my dad occasionally. But I'll never forget the day that we were... It was on our pig farm in Idaho that all of a sudden someone was knocking at the door. And when my mother opened the door, it was a policeman. And he was announcing to my mother that my father had passed away. And I don't know why it was that it came by way of him, but that's what happened. Somebody had, I don't know if my grandparents were the ones that told us. And for some reason, they weren't able to get a hold of my parents directly. So the sh local sheriff came to tell us. And it was just like, it shattered me. It really just, it was like someone put a bomb inside of me and blew me to pieces. And the strangest thing happened. My grandparents came to visit us after attending my dad's funeral in Los Angeles. And I had had a dream. And in my dream, I was at the funeral service. And I hadn't told anybody about this. I was only eight at the time. And my grandfather said to me, it was interesting. He said, you know, I was there at your father's funeral service. He said, would you like to know what the gravestone looked like? And I said, I already do. He said, what do you mean? I said, I had a dream. And I, so I described it to him and he said, oh my God, that's exactly what it looks like. We all have these abilities, but the mind is both our greatest tool and our greatest limitation. And because people don't really learn much about mind or how to use their mind to create beyond the limitations that are normally imposed in culture, then they're limited by the consensus norm. But the Jung said the average man can never be successful. So to be average today really is to be a sick person with a lot of self-imposed or culturally imposed limitations. And my entire education system is to help people know how to be healthy enough and to have a spiritual philosophy that's unbound so that your the license for creativity and exploration is given to each student to the degree that they accept it. Because to really do effective healing work with people, you have to be outside of a belief system or you put limiting, you limit your own capacity to perceive the inner reality of that individual. So I teach my students to let go of all dogmas, all doctrines, and all belief systems and be fully present with what it is that that person carries or you can only treat symptoms but you're never you know that's like pulling the tops off of roots a weed you never get to the roots and it just grows back and that's really the problem with the allopathic system it's not looking at the etiology it's always addressing symptoms because it's so profitable that's right it's like the patient comes in the door and they're like okay this is the throat cancer guy you know yeah. you're just They've labeled you and mm -hmm. they've limited you. They're no longer seeing you as an individual with all that you're bringing to the table. They're just seeing you as that diagnosis. Yeah. And of course, there's so much more to each person. Well, let's talk a little bit about your approach, Paul. You have a holistic approach and part of it includes lifestyle management. How can we rebalance our lives that are hectic, stressed, and really self-limited with depressive and anxious thoughts? It's a very good question. And I spent many years working on how to teach that 
in the simplest and most effective way. I spent years in meditation and extensive study. And what I did was I asked my soul to guide me to what were the essential components of any living philosophy. What do we have to have? Remember, philosophy means love of wisdom. Mm -hmm. Wisdom is the essence of knowledge. It's what comes from the application of knowledge. It's just like you have to smelt iron to get iron or rocks to get gold or precious metals. Wisdom is refinement of knowledge, but through experience. Wisdom is not a collection of ideas. It's a collection of experience that lets us know what these ideas are. So what I found in a nutshell is that you cannot have a healthy living philosophy without four key categories. And I named them doctors. And the reason I did that is two things. One, the word doctor in Latin means teacher. So they're the four teachers. And I also did it because so many people keep running to medical doctors with every itch, scratch, bump and problem. And if people knew how to work with the four doctors that are within all of us, they would probably rarely ever need to see one of those doctors because they would know how to work with nature and with their body. So what I came to through my investigations is that the chief of all doctors is what I call Dr. Happiness. Dr. Happiness is the overarching physician because Dr. Happiness is the category of a living philosophy in which you have to be very clear on what is happy making for you as a person and when are you going to do that and how much of it do you need to do to maintain connection with happy making and not lose your sense of creativity and willingness to create happiness in your life or you always expect somebody else to do that for you. So Dr. Happiness as the chief physician is also responsible for establishing core values. I tell people your yes has no value until you learn to say no and you never know when to say no without a value to distinguish what is and isn't congruent with what you need or, or what lifestyle you want to live. So Dr. Happiness is not only the chief of identifying what's happy making and establishing clearly when and how much of that you're going to do to give you the joy and the sense of heartfelt connection that you need to really be passionate about life, but Dr. Happiness has to look at the other three doctors. Oh, I love this because I think I used to think, Paul, that well-being had to do simply with movement. I was an exercise fitness instructor. I was all into that. I was like, it doesn't matter what you eat. And then I was like, okay, I learned about the Weston Price Foundation. I'm like, it's about nourishing food too. So it's yeah. movement and food. And then I was like, oh, wait, it's not just movement and food. It's movement and food and sunshine. And yes. <laughs> anyway, I started adding to it. But the heart piece, what you're talking about, this this happiness piece, this emotional piece is so critical. You can't be, I will dare say, in perfect health if your heart is unhappy. No, it's impossible. You know, the heart is the home of the soul and the soul carries the desire to fulfill whatever it is you came to fulfill in your life. And so if we're detached from the compass of the heart, we can be dangerously distracted by beliefs and ideas in our head. Like we often chase money, but find ourselves in a career. And as Joseph Campbell says, you can spend your whole life climbing a ladder to realize it's leaning on the wrong wall. And so the heart is what really is the compass that the soul uses to say yes or not so much. But when the head leads, it's very susceptible to contamination by publicly contrived or ideas that are implanted by people that make us profitable to them. Yes. And then life becomes a series of should obligations and then resentments can build. Mm -hmm. And instead of moving from that happy heart place, we're moving from ideas or self-programming that is moving us in a certain direction that isn't our best bet. But talk to me about the other doctors. Who are the other three? Well, doctor movement is next. And that really is related to all the doctors, by the way, I'll keep it simple because of the time frame we're in, but each of the doctors works at the physical level, the emotional, mental, and the spiritual level. Mm -hmm. So doctor happiness has to be considered about what's happy making for my body, what's happy making for me emotionally, what's happy making for me mentally, and what's happy making for me spiritually. And, and my system spirituality means connecting to a progressively greater whole because that's the only real way you can really realize who and what you really are. 
So doctor movement deals really with how much movement do I need and what type of movement is going to best support my dream? Do I want to climb mountains? Do I want to play with my grandkids? Do I want to be a weightlifter, a bicycle rider, a triathlete, a gardener, a rodeo rider? So doctor movement's first function is just to give you a healthy body. And its second function is to give you the conditioning you need to fully engage your dream, which can be a million, as many dreams as there are people. The next doctor is doctor diet. So doctor diet's chief guidance is a, it has to be high quality food from high quality organic biodynamic or permaculture type soil for obvious reasons to anybody listening to the Weston A. Price podcast. So the first shall we say, guideline from Dr. Diet is it has to not only be from organic high quality soil, but we have to be aware that every dollar we spend is either funding the restoration of nature and the planet or destroying it. So from a spiritual perspective, it's very dangerous to be unaware as to how diet influences you. And because your diet is is ultimately what you make your body out of and what you create the hormones out of that are your interface between the soul, the mind, and the physical self, if your diet's deficient or toxic, you will end up being unable to manufacture the hormones that give you the interface that the seven chakras present. So someone with a lack of testosterone will have a psychic imbalance. Someone with elevated estrogen or depressed estrogen, elevated or depressed serotonin, dopamine, any every single hormone in the body is actually a vibrational interface between the subtle and the physical realms. So if our diet's not clean and our diet doesn't provide the nutrients that we need to feed our body and rebuild our body, but also give us the hormones to interface with our psyche, then we end up with all sorts of mental emotional disorders that get drugged and then people don't know that their diet's involved. So they get more and more toxic and go further and further into this rabbit hole of unconsciousness. So the fourth doctor is Dr. Quiet. And Dr. Quiet in my system deals with sleep and introspection. Having time, not only a good sleep hygiene, but having time to spend time each day connecting to the soul, the consciousness within yourself and saying, how did I do today? Could I have done better? How could I have handled that argument? Was I too forceful? Was I disrespectful? Did I maintain my obligations and commitments? How can I be a better human being to be a better example for others and to be a better caretaker of the world? I'm so glad this fourth doctor, you mentioned him. I'm sure it's going to catch people by surprise because this may be the most important one for these times. I'm afraid we are numbing ourselves to reality and to personal growth and spiritual growth by being so distracted by our devices and, you know, our screens. It's just, I feel like no one takes time. I don't want to say they don't have time. They don't take time for introspection because they're too busy watching the latest TikTok trend. I just recently released a video on my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash Paul C-H-E-K live, Paul Check live called The Danger of Living in Two Realities. It's a very potent 90-minute presentation that shows exactly what happens if too much of your consciousness is, shall we say, commandeered by the digital reality and what the cost of that is to each of us and the planet and specifically nature. It's a very, very important presentation that I put together because it shows the danger of digital technologies and how it's drawing us away from our awareness of and responsibility to the analog world of nature and how we are on the edge of destroying this planet because we are so caught in a digital reality. But you're right, Dr. Quiet is the domain of meditation. It's the domain of any practice that brings you in touch with your inner self. Coming up, Paul explains how the way we raise and educate our children shapes our world today and why we are having a collective wake-up call when it comes to health and wellness. You're listening to the Wise Traditions Podcast from the Weston A. Price Foundation. We pause now to recognize our sponsors. Upgraded formulas. A lot of us spend a boatload on supplements each month, let's be honest, but we're really not sure in the end if they have the desired effect. 
Have you ever thought about how important it is to actually know your nutrient levels so that you can better understand your performance and health? And wouldn't it be great if you also knew how much you were absorbing exactly or not absorbing and whether you have too much of some nutrient in your system? Well, I'm excited to say that we now have a chance to accurately test all of this and then gain confidence consequently about what the body needs to optimize health. I'm talking about Upgraded Formula's Upgraded Hair Test Kit and their consultation and their minerals, which absorb really, really well so that you can vanquish any of those hidden deficiencies that are affecting your thyroid, adrenal function, and much more. I just ordered my hair test kit to get started, and I can't wait to talk to their certified professionals to analyze my results. With Upgraded Labs testing, by the way, you can find out your key mineral status, your heavy metal toxicity levels, and the current state of metabolism, along with other things. So test, don't guess. Check out the test and consultation at UpgradedFormulas.com and save 20% on your first purchase with the code WISE at checkout. Again, that's UpgradedFormulas.com and the code word WISE. An optimal carnivore. Have you heard that they have a new product out? It's Brain Nourish, a revolutionary new product that combines grass-fed beef brain and lion's mane mushrooms in a groundbreaking formula. It is the ultimate whole food, no tropic to build a better brain. These two ancestral superfoods have been used for centuries to improve brain function and overall mental well-being. And they're now available for the first time in convenient capsules. Studies have shown that both ingredients are remarkable at improving cognition and brain health, both in the short and long term, guaranteed to have your brain firing on all cylinders for supreme focus, elevated mood, improved memory, greater clarity, and enhanced creativity. And they offer many, many benefits for health, vitality, and longevity. Thanks to the highly nutritious superfood ingredients, each serving has 1,500 milligrams of organic lion's mane and 1,500 milligrams of beef brain. At Optimal Carnivore, they only use 100% real mushrooms, organic fruiting bodies which are rigorously tested for active compounds. And the beef brain is sourced from the highest quality regenerative farms in New Zealand. The mission over at Optimal Carnivore is to make it easy for people to consume the most nutrient-dense foods on the planet. And they also plant one tree for every product sold, which helps the environment. They currently have a grass-fed organ complex that contains nine organs, a grass-fed liver product, and the new Brain Nourish. So visit amazon.com slash Optimal Carnivore and use the code WESTON10 to receive 10% off all products. That's amazon.com slash optimal carnivore and the code Weston10. This is Holistic Hilda, and you're listening to Wise Traditions. And your inner self is what's expressing its beliefs and behaviors as your outer self. So the outer behaviors are already gone. Once you've done it, you've done it. But on the inner self, you can rewind the tape. You can project into the future and say, okay, next time my mother's around and she starts triggering me, I can start breathing through my belly and I can give her permission to be who she is without having to take it personally. So that's where we do our simulation training and doctor movement is where we do our acting. (laughs) Yes. I love how these work in tandem and in beautiful choreography with one another. I'm, I'm getting the picture of it. And I'm also thinking of the spiritual practice. I think it's called examine mm-hmm. where saints of old would do exactly what you're saying, Paul. Yes. At mm-hmm. the end of the day, they would review the day and yes. they would ask these important questions. If my last thing of the day is sending a text to my sibling, like a little, a couple of emojis. <laughs> I mean, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that, but can I take time to cultivate my soul to be yes. a, a better person tomorrow with the help of God? Yeah. So this is so beautiful and I'm loving it. But I also want to ask you because you're implying this in your last sentence, when you were talking about how it doesn't only impact me, my choice of engaging with the virtual world or the real one, it also impacts nature and the people around me. I want to ask you, about what your take is on the world right now. Is our poor health, our lack of visiting, maybe these four doctors that are right there with us, is our poor health as a population part of what's made us vulnerable to sickness right now? Well, I think what it is, is it, you know, if you think, what is a parent's job? A parent's function in a child's life is to educate it about how to live and how to navigate the world. 
But we have parents that are so distracted and so caught up in the capitalist consumerist mindset and the scientific materialist mindset, and they're not aware of what their kids are being educated into. So this is why I'm such a big promoter of the Waldorf school systems, because they really don't want the kids on screens. They use art, they use acting, they use storytelling, they do crafts. And the whole Waldorf system is built built so that the activities that a child does are congruent with the stage of conscious development and which part of the brain are coming online, such as, for example, the child's right brain is the dominant feature for the first four years, and then it progressively gets more and more left brain. Steiner said children should not read or do math until they're at least seven to 10 years of age because it pushes them into their left brain and they lose touch with the wholeness. A child's supposed to be out exploring the frogs and the birds and the bees and the dogs and the bushes and the bugs so that they actually understand and palpably feel that connection. Because then when the left brain comes on and someone tells you, oh, we should use chemicals to kill all the bugs, the child has a sense of, wait a minute, the bugs are part of the world. They're part of, aren't they the ones that pollinate? Aren't, do we really? And when a child's educated properly, they realize everything in nature has a function. So that when they start going to school and being told, exterminate that, kill that, blast the hell out of that. They already have an inherent sense that that's wrong. But when you get kids raised in their left brain, they have all these crazy ideas, but they don't know how it fits into the big picture. And then one day they got cancer and no one can help them. And they come to see someone like me or someone that I've trained and they realize, oh my God, I've been eating junk and poison my whole life. I've got a PhD in science, but I don't really know anything about how life works. And so the point I'm making is, is that If kids were educated in four doctors and they realized how important happy making is and how important movement is and how important diet is, which goes right back to the health of the planet and how important rest and time to be in themselves is, then we would not have this situation in the world. And the problem is the medical system would have gone broke a long time ago. We'd be hard to control because we would be too in touch with our authentic truth which would be in harmony with the reality of nature. But we've been pulled into this digital illusion and our minds have been hijacked by dopamine hits. And what we've done is we have forgotten that the real issue of money is its value because its value links to some commodity of tangible goods. But when you don't realize that if you spend a hundred bucks on something that's cheap plastic garbage made in a Chinese factory that's destroying nature and destroying the environment, then you don't realize that that hundred dollars should have been going to something tangible because if we extract more out of nature than we can detoxify and regenerate, then we are actually using commercialism, capitalism, and scientific materialism to buy our way into the exact disaster we're in. And so Mm -hmm. what you get is a lot of sick people that don't know how to live and don't know how to take care of themselves and who don't realize that real doctors are healthy people and wise people, not sick people. Real teachers are wise people, not lost and confused people. So what's happened is we've actually now turned to leaders that are the exemplification of confusion, of materialism, and of coercion and control and manipulation, while the Bruce Lipton's and the Greg Braden's and the Eckhart Tolls are all pushed into the fringes as the weird ones. <laughs> well, we don't mind being in those fringes with those people. I can tell you right now that the Weston A. Price Foundation, as you know, has always been championing the very things you're talking about, connection with nature, the wisdom of our ancestors, things that are tangible and real. And the way we see technology, we say technology as servant. In other words, we're not trying to be Luddites and go living in a cave. That's why you and I are talking. Using technology, we're thankful for it, but it doesn't own us. We use it for the betterment of society and for our own lives, but it has to be used judiciously. And so I am so thankful you've given us so much value added. Paul, I'm really excited for people to listen to this and to consider 
how they might tune into these four doctors that you've mentioned for really good health. And now I want to pose to you here at the end of the show, the question I often pose at the end, if the listener could just do one thing to improve their health, what would you recommend that they do? I'll tell you that, but I want to just make one more point because it's so important. Go for it. Look, most people listening to this podcast will have read Weston A. Price's book, Nutrition and Physical Degeneration. That's mandatory reading for all my students. I'll ask you one question. If that book was used in high school and university nutrition courses as the first book you read and was the basis of our understanding of nutrition, how would the world be different right now? Okay. So Weston A. Price was a legitimate scientist who brought us real authentic knowledge based on a lot of personal investigation. So that's a real teacher doing real science instead of all this trickery with foods and chemicals and crap. So I just want to make the point, Weston A. Price is what we would call a hierophant, a true spiritual teacher, because he teaches you how to live. If Weston A. Price was used as a main vehicle of educating people on the foundation of what health and vitality is and how to create it, we would not have a viral pandemic. It would just be another day and we would just be focusing on making the world a better place together instead of figuring out how do we undo all the damage we've created by being so smart that we're not very smart. Okay. Now the answer to your other question is simple. What's the first thing you do? You ready? I'm ready. Stand in front of a mirror and be very honest with yourself about how what you're doing is working and pay close attention to what it is that makes you tired and how you're responding to it. Take close attention to what you're eating and whether it's making you overweight or underweight. Pay close attention to your energy, vitality, your sex drive, your creativity, your bowel movements, your urination, how much gas you have, how your teeth are, how your gums are, how your skin looks, how clear your eyes are, the quality of your hair, your fingernails. I mean, we all are inner acting with these parts of ourselves every day, but most people just watch it get worse and worse and worse and never ever say, wait a minute, how come every time I drink a coffee, I feel better for 10 minutes, then I get a headache. And if you actually did that, you'd start coming to the conclusion, maybe coffee's not the best thing. Maybe what I need is sleep. What a concept. How come I love these cookies, but every time I eat them, I get pimples and I don't feel good. Mm -hmm. How come every time I eat something with gluten and I feel lousy, head foggy, and my joints hurt? You see, being healthy doesn't require a lot of training, but it does require honesty and observation and a commitment to listening to the wisdom of a hundred trillion cells that somehow have evolved for billions of years. And even though we think we're smart, they're a lot smarter than we are. If you actually just pay attention to what your body's telling you every day, you won't need to listen to doctors that most of which can't even keep themselves healthy anyhow. That's right. It's like we're sleepwalking in these bodies. Exactly. It is time for us yes. to wake up and pay attention. Our body is a great teacher too. It's trying to tell us something. Yes. So look at those four doctors and say, why am I depressed? Why am I anxious? Am I doing what's happy making for me? And do I have clear values that are life affirmative and dream affirmative? Am I resting adequately? And if not, what's stopping me? Am I eating high quality food and supporting the people that support mother nature? Am I moving my body in ways that are joyful and that give me the fitness that I need to be a healthy person and live my dreams? And I'm going to tell you something real quick. I've lectured, as you know, I've been doing this for 37 years. I've lectured all over the world extensively in many fields of health. I have asked this question to healthcare professionals many times in large audiences. How many of you are not doing what's happy making for you frequently enough to be happy? Almost every hand in the audience goes up. How many of you are over or under exercising? Almost every hand in the audience goes up. Wow. How many of you are eating foods that you know are causing you trouble, but you keep doing it anyhow? Almost every hand in the audience goes up. How many of you are not getting enough sleep and it's affecting you and causing you to have to eat more sugar and drink more coffee and tea and things like that? Almost every hand in the audience goes up. And then I say, how long have you known you've been doing this to yourself? Almost all of them say for my whole life. <sighs> 
And I say, okay, I've got a question for you. What are you teaching your patients when you cannot even get the most essential things that make health in line in your own life? Are you just giving them more pills like you're taking? How's that working so far? Are you teaching them shortcuts that don't work? Because if it's not working for you, that's not really good marketing for your patients and your clients. So the point I'm making is the best doctors and therapists in the world do this to themselves all day because they are caught in an academic concept of what health is, which is based on the sales of pills and supplements and magic bullets, all of which can largely be removed by the simple practices Weston A. Price taught and others like him. And so the fastest way to health is quit bullshitting yourself and get back to basics. And there's no way you can be a healthy person without four doctors. You can be in line with your happiness, exercising, eating well, and not resting, and you'll mess yourself up. You can be happy and rest well and eat well, but not exercise, you'll mess yourself up. If you're exercising well, resting well, and eating well, but you're not doing what's happy making for you, you'll go into a crisis of anxiety and depression because life has no meaning for you. You'll be a fit, sick person. You cannot reduce life lower than those four doctors. Once you have that foundation built, you watch the diseases and the illnesses and the fatigue just start disappearing like magic. That's what I do for a living, and that's why I'm a 60-year-old fit athlete. You are. And I'm very tempted to call this episode wake up call. (laughs) Well, good. It is a wake up. It is. It is a wake up call. And I really appreciate your boldness, your challenges today, and you're sharing your heart as well. So thank you, Paul Check, And we look forward to connecting with you again sometime soon. I look forward to it. Let's do it. Thank you so much. It's a great show. Our guest today was Paul Check. Visit his website for more information and resources checkinstitute.com. And that's spelled C-H-E-K, by the way, checkinstitute.com. And I'm Hilda Labrador, the host and producer of this podcast for the Weston A. Price Foundation. You can find me at holistichilda.com. I've got resources on my website too. And for the transcript for this and many, many, many of our podcasts, go to our website, westonaprice.org and click on the podcast page. And now for a letter to the editor from a recent journal death by hospital. My father passed away on January 7th. He was killed at the hospital in the same way I described in my article, Questioning COVID, that came out in the summer of 2021. The only difference is that my father was not sick to start with. Although without symptoms, he tested positive to a swab test, and he was no longer allowed to stay in the nursing home. At the hospital, they started to give him sleeping pills of various kinds. They wouldn't let him, or he was unable to perhaps, drink and eat alone, but worse, they left him uncovered and without clothing. He complained of being cold and then he got a fever. One lung showed signs of pneumonia, but they thought it was a urinary tract infection and did not recognize it was a lung issue because they do not visit patients that much anymore. He died 22 hours after he was admitted. The autopsy was done to cover up everything and now the judge has not decided what to do. My father was one of the most intelligent people in the world. Now I feel lost as he can no longer give me wise advice. I know he must be in some sort of paradise for all the good deeds he did in his lifetime. He was so generous and always concerned to help others. This is a letter from Iluna in Italy. Iluna, thank you for your letter. We're so sorry for your loss. You too can write us a letter to the editor and submit it to the journal for publication at info at westonaprice.org. And in the subject line, just put letter to the editor. It can be your own personal story or something having to do with these times, or something that you've noted in our journals or on our podcast. Thank you so much for listening, my friend. Stay well, and remember, all shall be well, and all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. On behalf of the Weston A. Price Foundation, thanks for listening. We have many free resources to support you on your health journey. Visit westonaprice.org to find podcasts, articles, videos, and more. You can also find a local chapter near you for help in finding sources of great food. We invite you to support the Foundation's mission of education, research, and activism by becoming a member. Thanks again, and take care. Wise Traditions is a project of the Weston A. Price Foundation for wise traditions in food, farming, and the healing arts. 
The content on this podcast is provided for informational purposes only and is not intended to substitute for the advice provided by your doctor or other healthcare professional. It is not intended to be, nor does it constitute healthcare or medical advice.